Okay, so once you've uh, downloaded the uh, Photoshop uh, presets, um, watercolor presets to your uh, desktop and you've extracted the file, um, what uh, we're going to need to do is to go through a number of steps. And the first one uh, is going to be to set up the workspace that you've got here um, in the form that's going to be more suitable for um, watercolor painting or for any kind of painting. So you're going to go to uh, File, Scripts, and then at the bottom of this list here, which you won't be able to see on the screen, is a link uh, called Browse. So click on Browse. Um, what you then do is you navigate to your desktop if that's where you've saved your Photoshop settings. Um, go into the <coughs> Photoshop settings uh, directory and then into workspaces and click on this file workspace import export.jsx. That's a JavaScript file and click load. And what that'll do is it'll bring up this little uh, dialog which allows you to either export your workspace, which it could be, which you may find very useful, um, and also to import uh, saved workspaces. So click on uh, import, uh, click on import again, and navigate to uh, where you've saved your Photoshop settings. Um, go into the workspaces uh, directory and then into exported workspaces. Click on watercolor workspace and click OK. Uh, if you've already imported the workspace, you're going to get this message. Um, <clears throat> if it's a newer version and you want to continue, then just say yes. Uh, so in your case, you shouldn't get this message because you won't have imported it yet, more than likely. So uh, I'm going to click yes anyway because re-importing doesn't do any harm. And we'll get a message saying that the workspace was correctly imported. And we can close this down. And <clears throat> we're now going to um, exit Photoshop and uh, restart it. It's not uh, absolutely essential, but it's a good idea to do that. So I'm going to exit it and restart it. And at this stage, uh, if I go to Window, uh, Workspace, I should see um, up here somewhere <coughs> um, an entry for watercolor workspace. So I'm going to click on that. And you now get a different looking workspace. And uh, if you have um, downloaded and installed the Magic Picker, then you're going to see it uh, here. Over here are uh, your tools, as usual. And down here are some um, panels. Um, and up here the layers and down here the swatches. What we now need to do is to um, import the presets themselves. And in order to do that, uh, you're going to go to Edit, uh, Presets, Export, Import Presets. Uh, click on Import Presets. Uh, click on Select Import Folder. Navigate to where you've uh, extracted your um, Photoshop settings. Uh, click on Presets and click on OK. And on the left hand side now you can see all of the presets that you uh, will require. So uh, click on Add All and that brings it into the Import side and uh, then click on Import Presets. If you've already uh, imported the presets, you're going to get this message. Um, you can re-import them. It won't do any harm. Um, in your case, you probably won't get the message because you won't have imported them yet. So I'm going to say yes. And after a few seconds, you can see that the presets have been correctly imported into Photoshop. At this stage, uh, what you need to do is to exit Photoshop and restart it. 
Right, so what we now need to do is to import each of the individual presets one by one. Um, the first one we're going to import uh, are the tool presets. So click on the icon at the top left hand of the screen here. Um, you, you probably see a series of uh, tools like, uh, like these ones here, um, unless you've loaded up new ones already. Click on the icon here. And right at the bottom of this list, uh, you're going to see an entry for watercolor tool presets. Uh, you can't see it on this screen because uh, the screen is too small. So click on uh, the, go right down to the bottom cl and click on watercolor tool presets. And you'll then get a message saying uh, replace current tool and so on. Or you can either append the tools or you can replace them. And I think you should uh, replace them because these are just going to confuse uh, you when you're trying to find the brushes uh, or, the, or the tools for uh, the watercolor painting. So click OK. And you'll now get a list uh, uh, like this one here. Let's bring this up a little bit so we can see it better. All right. OK, so we're now going to import the uh, <coughs> uh, the swatches. Uh, there's a swatch called the Windsor uh, watercolor swatch. So click on the link down here. Um, right at the bottom of this list, you're going to see an entry for Windsor watercolors. So just click on that. Um, replace, yes, and that's it. You should now see this uh, swatch here. Um, we're now going to import the brushes. Click on here, click on this link, and right at the bottom you'll see an entry for watercolor brushes. So click on that, click on OK, and you'll get a new set of brushes. Um, the next thing to do would be to import the styles. So again, click on this. Right at the bottom, you'll see a list, uh, an entry for watercolor styles. Click on that. Click on OK. And we've imported the styles. And we're now going to import the actions. So this uh, up here. <coughs> Again, click on this little link. Um, right at the bottom, you'll see an entry for watercolor actions. Click on that. And it'll import the actions for you. The last preset um, that we need to import is uh, the are the um, uh, pa uh, paper patterns. Um, so we click on here. Sorry, click on here. Um, click on texture. There are various ways of doing this, but this is a, a reasonably simple way of doing it. Up here, uh, you see this little. Uh, drop down list, click on that, uh, click on this, and again at the bottom you can see an entry for watercolor. Uh, click on OK, and you should now get uh, this entry here, the Langton 30 by 20 at 150 ppi, which is the pattern used um, by all of my brushes. So at this stage uh, you should be ready to roll. What we'll do is to um, open a new document, create a new document, and uh, just see uh, if everything's working OK. So um, uh, do a file, a new, and um, um, what you should do is to set the resolution at 150 pixels per inch. That's absolutely essential with these uh, tools that uh, you have here. Um, you should also set the color profile to Profoto RGB because the Windsor Newton color swatch down here is set for Profoto. If you use a different color swatch, then of course you could change that to some other profile like sRGB. The size of the uh, document doesn't matter, uh, or it does matter, but uh, it's up to you. It's really what you want to display it at. And uh, what I would normally do in this, at this stage is to 
save that preset as <clears throat> your own, let's say 10 by 10 at 150 ppi. Uh, for example, I've got a preset here which is 16 by 12 inches at 150 ppi, so I don't have to go and type things in or remember them. 8 bit color mode is generally fine for painting. You could go to 16 bits if you want and click OK. And we now just have a, um, a white uh, document. And in order to, to set this up uh, for watercolor painting, uh, click on the actions. And <clears throat> you should see uh, something like this. Now, if you don't, uh, that's uh, you may see it may look like this, in which case all you need to do is to go here and go to the button mode and uh, click on um, make watercolor paper. And you can see that uh, what we've got over here are a number of <coughs> layers that have been created. There's a paper overlay uh, group of layers that you can close down. It's locked, so uh, there's no risk of your, your um, overwriting it by mistake. Um, underneath that is a, a background layer, which also has a pattern that is also locked. And then in the middle here is the uh, layer on which you're going to paint. OK, so what we have here is a watercolor layer. Uh, it's a blank layer. And uh, the important thing about it is that the blend mode here is set to multiply. Um, when you, uh, after you've run the make watercolor action, make watercolor paper action, um, <clears throat> uh, the action will also select a default brush, brush for you or default tool for you. So uh, at that stage, let's say if we pick uh, a color, um, what I suggest you do is go view uh, print size, which gives you <clears throat> the size at which uh, the document would be printed at 150 pixels, pixels per inch. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, we can paint uh, on this layer here. And uh, it's got a nice transparent look. Very much like watercolor paint. So we're now ready to uh, paint uh, and um, um, uh, look at things in a bit more detail. So over here, you can have all of your uh, um, uh, tool presets. And uh, you always select a, a new brush or a new tool from here. Um, we have our actions here, which allow us to do uh, variety of different things. Um, we have our swatches down here, our magic picker here, which I hope you've downloaded. And that's really largely what would be needed, possibly the uh, styles, but much less often. Um, and sometimes the brushes, but again, much less often. Mostly what you're going to do would be to use the tools from here, the actions, uh, the swatches, uh, the magic picker.